Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's going to be the third in the series of the Walkman fixes. So I've already done two of these and now this is my third one. So this is a Sony Walkman EX190. I believe this came out in 1999 so I think out of all of the ones this is probably going to be the most modern. I haven't checked up the numbers of the other ones but to me this looks the most modern. It looks like a very basic one. It has got mega bass which the other two that I did didn't have that and I believe from memory that that just increases the bass so depending on what you're listening to if you're listening to some sort of house music then that's going to increase the bass of that uh, of that track now what have we got here we just got stop fast forward play rewind also it looks like there's a little battery indicator don't know what that's going to do maybe it's going to light up green and maybe it goes red when it gets low I don't know uh, volume We've got the AVLS, the same as the one in the second one, and that is the automatic volume limiter system. So it's there to protect your hearing when you're listening to it on headphones, and also it's supposed to level out differences in the uh, in the music, I think. And uh, what else have we got here? We've got the same as the second one, the anti-roller mechanism, which is supposed to help when you're moving this around to stop the music getting distorted. So that's another feature but apart from that it looks like quite a basic one now I did pop batteries in this before and it didn't work I did notice if you have a look here it looks pretty corroded it doesn't look awful but it might be just enough to stop the connection because this one here is completely dead so if we turn on this little speaker here plug in a 3.5 millimeter jack You can hear that it's not making any sounds at all. And also, can you see the battery light here is not lit up? Now, I don't know whether it sh maybe it only lights up when the battery's low, but I'm thinking that really that should light up all the time. So I reckon that's going to be green when it's working. So what I could do is I could just try and clean that up there, but I do see that there's two little screws here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart to see what it's like on the inside anyway, because I would like to see what it's like on the inside, and then it will give me a chance to clean the other contact, because if the batteries have leaked, maybe if they were left in a long time, maybe the contact down here is damaged as well. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this apart, and also I need to remember to clean the little heads. I didn't realise, but I've been told by all the helpful viewers that basically, you see this little head here, you can clean this with IPA cleaner and also the pinch roller. Now I'm thinking this is the pinch roller here and this is the thing that helps the tape along. So I suppose if this was all covered in dust and grime, there's a chance that the tape could be slipping. So I need to remember to clean them too and it will be easy to clean when I take it off. Also, it looks like there's some food or something caught in here. So I need to clean that. So let's pop out these little screws here, here and here, and then hopefully it will come apart easy, this one. So in case you've missed my first two videos, I bought eight of these in the job lot for, I think it was 40 something pound. They work out, I think it was five pound 36 each. Or was it six pound 36? I can't remember now, but anyway, it was either five or six pound. It wasn't a huge amount of money. And all of them, all of them are faulty. So rather than do, trying to do them in one video that goes on for like ten hours, I thought I'd break it down into eight separate videos. So that means some of them might be short videos, but the uh, I won't give away what happened in the first two because you might want to watch them and then it will be a bit of a spoiler. And these are not the screws are not wanting to come out. Right, I wonder if this unclips like all the others. Then I mean those screws must be holding something in. Oh yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, there must be clips on it still. Now what I've been told is on a lot of Sony products, they have little arrows to where the clips are to save you just kind of like breaking them as you take them off. Now I can't see any arrows on this one, but on the first one, when I look back, there was definitely arrows on the first one that I fixed. So although there's screws, it's still held in everywhere with the plastic clips. You can see them just here, you see. There and there. Put 
problem is when I do this I normally end up breaking a couple of the clips. You know, I can see if you look closely in here, I can see that there is arrows pointing to these things here, but I don't think they look to be too far in to be able to... Oh, here we go, look. Ah, there you go. So Sony has helped us out, you see? There's little tiny arrows here, here and here. And when I pushed in there, this bit unclipped. So there you go, like normal, I have broken one of the clips. Also, I've got this thing here. I'm not sure where this belongs to, whether it broke off something or whether it's just fallen out. Oh, there you go, it's the top of the, it's the top of the screw head here. So I could super glue that back on there, that's not a problem. And I'm thinking, where did that last one break off? Looks like a small one. I would say it's from that corner there. So again, one little thing like that's not gonna cause, not gonna cause a major problem, it will still clip back together. Right, okay, so the rubber band hasn't perished in this one. We have a dirty contact here, but yet the contacts look okay on this side. Yeah, look at that, it just barely makes the contact there. It's a slightly different design than the others. And I don't know what this bit here is for. It must be to keep the pressure on the battery or something. Right, okay, so I suppose the first thing we'll do is put the batteries in and then measure to see if we have any voltage on the, uh, I can see the battery terminal here and here. I can see where it says BAT and BAT. So if you look closely, you can see it says B-A-T-T -T here and also B-A-T-T. -T. So I'm thinking it must be that one there. Might be as easy as just a corroded thing there, which would be a real real nice one. So I'm going to put my multimeter to volts DC and I'm going to put the leads on. It doesn't really matter which way around but this is the positive of the battery so I might as well put the red one to here otherwise it would just read minus but we would still get a reading anyway. Right so it doesn't look like I'm getting any reading. Now I'm just going to go straight on to these things themselves. No, okay, so I'm getting nothing out of the batteries, yet when I go onto the batteries here, you can see I'm getting 3.1 volts. So what's happening is, yeah, look there, it's this black lead here, it's the rust on this side, because if I go straight onto the battery there, and onto here, you can see 3.1 volts. But when I go straight onto here, and for example, onto this bit here, I'm not getting anything. So there you go, I mean, there might be other faults, but 100%, We've now proved that it is just this contact here. So let's see if we can get to this nice and easily, and then we've got to try to clean all the corrosion off it. Right, so this circuit board just held in with a little clip there. Oh, and there's a little screw here as well. Right, okay, well, this is soldered into place. Yeah, it's soldered via this big lump here. So I suppose I could unsolder it, but I really don't think there's any need. There's not a huge amount of corrosion on it. I'm just going to get the fiberglass pen, and I'm just going to rub it up and down here, and uh, it might start working. I need to remember to clean the tape head. The uh, belt here... Now everybody's been telling me it's not called a rubber band, it's a belt. So there you go, I remembered. But that one here, I mean, I'm going to have to see if it sounds okay, but it feels a little bit loose, but it still feels elastic. So I think that's going to be absolutely fine. And this thing here, which I, which I never knew, this was similar to the other one. Remember when I used a bit of grease on it? On the, well, sorry, if you didn't watch it, basically I was wondering what this kind of mechanism was. Apparently this is the auto-stop, so you know when it gets to the end of its end of the tape, it will automatically stop the tape, because I think this must spin round, realise it's not going round anymore, and then it locates in some sort of pin somewhere, and then stops the, uh, stops the tape. Must go round there, must move that thing over. So that's quite, uh, quite interesting. 
and on this one it looks very clean on the inside I can't see any marks or anything I don't even know if I would really need to put any grease anywhere I suppose it's not going to harm but everything just looks so immaculate it doesn't really look like it's been used it looks brand new so let's clean this thing up here and see what happens okay so I've got my gloves on this is a little fiberglass pen which is basically just a load of tiny little fibers that stick out and as you scrape it they kind of uh, it's just ever so slightly abrasive so that's what I'm going to be doing so really I should be spraying this with white vinegar but at this moment in time I've run out and the reason you would spray it is to stop any or try and stop any further corrosion because batteries are an alkaline and vinegar is an acid and then if you add acid to an alkaline it's supposed to neutralize it and vice versa if you add an alkaline to an acid it's supposed to neutralize it so I suppose if you remember back at school I can't remember was it pH was it six or seven was that like a neutral but whatever it is if you add one to another it's supposed to neutralize it so uh, but on this one here so basically you're supposed to add it onto here just to help stop the corrosion from coming back I suppose to kill it but with this one here I'm not too bothered because it doesn't look very bad at all Right, so you see what I'm doing now, I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of it, you can see the build up that's starting to happen down here, the build up of rust. Right, okay, you can see all the rust starting to come off, so I'm going to keep working on it. I'm just going to give it a helping hand and give it a little scrape with this, just to try to scrape it off the actual metal. Right, I just want to get a bit more pressure on it, so what I'm doing is I'm just putting another bit of metal just onto that bit there so I can get to the very last bit because the last bit is the most important bit because that's the bit that the battery contacts and I'm just struggling a little bit to actually, because every obviously because there's a spring, every time I push it in, it's uh, I, I don't want it to push in because I want to be able to push hard against it to scrape. So by pushing something behind it like this, it just makes it easier for me. I need to get some better quality ones of these as well. I only spent, I think it was $1.99 or $2.99 for two of them. They're very cheap, but they're all falling apart. They're getting either loose here or loose at the back here, so I'd have to get some proper branded ones. Don't get me wrong, these do the job, but you can see I'm having to kind of hold the metal at the end and stuff. I'll probably have to put a load of tape around it to strengthen it up. I think that's probably going to do and if you have a look obviously some of them are fiberglass bristles but you can definitely see some nice patches of brown there and if you look in I've had to take the spring out a bit but you can see there's definitely staining all around here where the rust has come off. So I'm going to get some IPA cleaner now and clean this all up. That's what I'm using. I'm using a cotton bud, a Q-tip. definitely cleaner than it was you can still see it's got a kind of black color on it because obviously it has eaten right into this you know it must be plated in nickel or something but I think that's clean enough to make a connection so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the batteries in we're gonna see if it lights up and then I need to just do little things like I just need to super glue it here I need to clean the tape head I might add a little bit of grease onto here just because obviously this is from 1999 so it might need a little bit but on this particular one it doesn't look like there's any signs of grease on it originally so but I'm thinking there must have been a bit of grease on it right so when I press play there we go lights up and it's moving perfect look at that nice and easy well obviously I don't know if it's playing correctly or not but I think I'm gonna assume for this moment in time it is well actually I'll tell you what let's quickly put a tape in now rather than listen to the uh, the archers which is what I believe viewers have told me that last thing in the last two videos that I did was I've just downloaded some royalty free music from YouTube
anything, is it? It's just crackling without actually doing anything. Yeah, that volume wheel's not right. But sound, the sound to that, uh, that sounds perfect. So at least it doesn't seem like there's any problem with the speed or anything like that. Let's just go on to the other side, which should be the archers. For a change, planning the day, talking before we get too tired. Or too tiddly. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I remember that from the last video. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Oh, go on, have another piece of toast. I'll let you. Mm. Huh. Right, okay, that volume's not doing anything, but that might not be a problem because that just might need some contact cleaner. And I have got some of that that I can spray in. And that will hopefully fix that will hopefully fix that. So what do I need to do? I need to put some IPA cleaner on the head here and also the pinch roller. So I'm going to get a clean cotton bud, dip it in the IPA. So I didn't do this originally because I wasn't sure whether it would damage it or not. And I'm just rubbing, you see this part here, the tape head. So I've pressed play to stick it up. And I'm just going to do the pinch roller as well uh, as well. Let me uh, Move that down there, move it round a little bit. I suppose it's just in case dust and stuff goes on it. You see this thing here? This thing. I'm sure that's enough. Right, okay, so let's get the let's get some contact cleaner on here. So this is what I'm gonna be using. I bought this from Maplin ages ago and it's a tape head disc drive cleaner. So I actually bought it for fixing stick drift on gaming controllers. I think I bought it for the Xbox at the time, but I've used it on the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con and it worked really well. So I'm going to just spray it in here, and then again it should evaporate off. So I'm going to spray it in, not a huge amount, and I'm going to just turn it. And now I'm going to spray it again. There you go. Hopefully that will work its way into all the little nooks and crannies in there. And I wonder whether that will make that start working or not. Let's clean it up. You can see when I put this on it just evaporates off straight away. Right, let's try that again. to the loudness doesn't it when you put it onto normal excellent right let's try mega bass well mind you is there any bass on that one let's give it a go see what it does
well I, I can hear a change in the music but obviously something like this hasn't really got much bass to it has it but I can definitely hear a difference so I think that's working uh, is there anything else to check I think that's about it fast forward and rewind These keep popping out. Yeah, it rewinds a bit more noisier than fast forward, but that could be just a tape because it's near the end of it. Sorry, it's near the beginning of it, so I'm rewinding to the beginning. Let's fast forward it a bit more then see what it sounds like. I think that's fine. I suppose a way we could tell is actually take the tape out and just to see if it's noisy, then we know whether it's the gears or the tape, don't we? It's a slightly different noise, but I don't think that's overly bad. But what I'll do is let's add a bit of grease in there, just, uh, just because. And I'm going to get the super glue as well and just super glue on just the top of that little head there. I was lucky I just dropped that on there and it looks like it's gone right into the exact spot, you know, the perfect break. Right, okay, so I'll just let that dry. There's no point in me trying to uh, super glue this clip back on because it's just not going to have the strength as soon as I put it in it's just going to pop off again so all I need to do now is let that dry and I'm going to put a little bit of silicon grease just on this here because now that it's got its kind of nickel coating gone it's just going to oxidize again over the coming months and possibly years so let me put a little bit of silicon grease on it and then basically this will allow the electricity to flow through it but at the same time it's not it's not going to it's going to kind of protect protect it from oxidizing i'm going to rub it all the way around and hopefully it will protect it a little bit from rusting up again because obviously I haven't got to every little part of this. Right, and I might as well put a tiny, tiny bit on the other side, but the other side's perfect, so obviously the batteries did not leak all the way down, it only leaked on this side here. Put a tiny bit there. I'm just gonna leave that for a few minutes just to let this one here fully hardened. Let's clip this back together. Pop the screws back in. Okay, so that's the screws back in. Let's pop the belt clip back on. And that to me looks like, let me just clean it there. So, one very clean looking Walkman, considering it's from 1999, so we're looking at something, believe it or not, that is 20 years old now. So, uh, I know obviously tapes are completely obsolete, but that really does look in good nick, doesn't it? It doesn't look like a product that is 20 years old. There we go, I think that's all the staining out of it. It keeps surprising me, there always seems to be just one more little bit of food stain on it. But, uh, yeah. Pop some batteries in and see how it performs. Right, so, play, yes, nice and quiet. Rewind, 
fast forward, let's pop a tape in, and let's play it in both directions. Okay, here we go, so no volume, tiny bit. That's definitely working and also there's no crackle either. Yeah, so that contact clean has definitely worked. AVLS works. Can't tell if the anti-rolling mechanism works. I presume it does. Let's see if this auto stop feature thing works. So let's fast forward it to the end. Let's rewind it and press play. The famous line from the second episode. Right now it hasn't stopped. Also it's coming up with a battery, battery low. Is that because it's under strain? Hold on now. Battery's red, I don't know if that means that the battery's low or whether or whether uh, is it just red all the time to show that it's got batteries in it? Let me put a couple of other batteries in. It didn't stop though, did it? I don't really know enough about that stop feature. Red batteries again, red light. So it must be just a red light to show that the battery's working. Didn't take you long to get your blinkers off, did it? Take my blinkers off? Is that what I did? I thought I was giving in to the little woman. Tony? Didn't take you long to get your blinkers off. Ah, stop that time. Right. Only if I'm not listening. Does it take a few seconds to stop? Right, I don't know, I probably helped it that time. Let's uh let's just leave it be. That's right, so it stop now. Right, so that is not working, is it? That's not working. I wonder if does it just need loosening up a bit? Mm. Right, it worked that time. Let me just do that again. Let me take the tape out of it because. Remember, it hasn't been used in a long time and the grease might have gone a little bit hard. Right, let's see if it does it now. If I'm not listening. Right, still moving stop now. Yay, right, okay. Uh, I'm gonna do it a few more times. I'm just gonna fast forward through it so you don't have to keep watching it. Only if I'm not listening. Right, didn't work that time. No, that's not working. Right, I'm going to take it apart again. I'm just going to fast forward through what I've taken apart. I'm going to try to work out where this mechanism is and try to put a little bit of grease in it.
Right, well the super glue didn't hold there, did it? Let's put another bit on there. Ah, right, okay, let me zoom in for this. I think I can see how this works. So when you press play, this thing moves around and then it shoves this over. And this should shove this over here like that. So this metal thing here needs to move over to do the auto shut off. Watch, see, goes around, moves up to there because it can't go around anymore because there's resistance. And this should knock this metal thing over. So the very fact that this metal slide thing here is not moving over might just mean that it needs to be greased a little bit. If I was just to grease that up it would loosen it a little bit. Oh I can definitely see all grease now in here. Let's see if I can take this off. Right so we've got a ribbon cable attached there as to the motor. I'm not really going to be able to take it off much more than that without taking off the other... I suppose I could un unclip it all. getting very involved if, if I do that. Right, okay, I've clipped that back down. I'm just going to get a Q-tip and I'm just going to put the mollycock grease into this bit here. You can see in here, you can see the kind of white residue. That, there you go. That stuff there. So I'm going to be greasing around about in here and along this bit here that needs to slide. So this needs to move over. In fact, you can see it all looks a bit gummed up, doesn't it? So I'm going to use some IPA cleaner, get rid of that old grease and then re-grease it and see if that makes it work. So to begin with, I'm just going to be wiping it with a dry cotton bud. Yeah, there's definitely grease on there. By taking apart a few of them and just reading the comments, you really do get to know more and more about them. I reckon after I've done eight of them, I think I'll be, depending on the faults, I think I'll be very confident on fixing them. Very confident. Because the, the comments really do help out, not just me, but also future viewers watching this. Because to begin with, I didn't have a clue what this thing was. I thought this was to do with this anti-rolling mechanism. But then somebody said, no, it's to do with the auto stop. And now I understand it. This goes round here. And then when, uh, when it can't go anymore, because the tape can't physically turn anymore, then this goes down the different path in here, which then forces this to move this bit out here which then is the same as you pressing must be the same as you pressing stop in fact it is look when I press hold on when I press stop there can you see it moves that along so that's exactly what you what it's doing it's pressing stop instead of you pressing stop so when I press stop can you see it's moving along there yeah it's amazing this is how you would replace the band as well but I'm not going to replace the band because it uh, seems to be fine at the moment but you can see it wouldn't be a big job if you had to replace the band the hardest part is getting into them because they clip open and shut right so I'm going to be using this grease here that was recommended to me by Chris from Gadget UK it's Monocoat EM the 30L and uh, like I said in the second video the huge tub of it is about 70 or 80 pounds but there is an eBay that's basically scooping it out and putting it into smaller jars which is then perfect for the likes of me because I don't need to use very much of it and I don't need the big jar. Right, I'm actually going to put quite a bit around here now. And I'll clean the band off afterwards.
that makes any difference now. I don't know whether I've applied too much or not. But we'll press play. Just need to get this little mega base thing in the correct place. Oh, that's it. You can see there's just a little switch just on the board here. So you need to make sure that this mega base thing lines up with the clip like that. No, still not turning itself off. Right. Okay. Using that amount of grease would have would have loosened that up. I mean, it's not the end of the world because a lot of the Walkmans don't even have this feature anyway. The older ones, but you know, when it's there, you want it to work, don't you? Because other point wise, it doesn't feel like a, a proper fix if there's still bits not working. Especially when they can be fixed. It'd be different if this arm was broken, then you would say, well, you know, I'm not going to go out and buy a new arm, or if the new arm was £30, you wouldn't do it. But when it all seems to be intact, I think it just needs working in more. Getting the grease to flow around the place. Ah, no, look what it is. Look at the belt slipping. Can you see the belt's moving? That's what it is. So the belt's not gripping enough, so there's not enough pressure to put it round. That's what it is. The belt's moving. Right, okay. Now, that could be because I did get a little bit of grease on that. Yes, yeah, see, look, he's doing it now. Yeah, it's the belt. Right, let me clean the belt up. That might have explained why... No, not beforehand, but I'm, I'm sure it was to do with the build-up of the old grease. But now I think it's more to do with the belt. Let's pop this belt off and try to give it a proper clean. Ah, OK, so that's interesting. I learned something there. So basically, because obviously it needs the power to be able to, to to do that and because it was slipping it wasn't giving it enough power let's give this belt a good clean so what went from being was going to be, or it's still an easy fix, but from what went to just having a, 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 a rusty battery terminal, there was actually a few things on here, wasn't there? So by the end of it, we were going to have done the battery terminal, the volume controller that was crackly and also not actually working, the auto stop feature, which I hope will now work, and uh, giving it a bit of a grease up, not a proper grease up, because you would have to take it all apart to be able to grease it properly but hopefully by putting grease on the top of it it will kind of work its way a little bit into where it needs to go and also clean the tape head and stuff with IPA I'm going to give this a wash okay so that's nice and clean now because obviously the grease would make it slip let's try to get it in now without getting grease everywhere be back in. Excellent, straight away. Look at you ready? Right, I think we can safely say that the auto stop now works. Nice little feature, nice mechanism to do it, isn't it? Exactly the same as just hitting stop yourself. So play stop, yeah? 
Right, okay, definitely happy I took that part again. Really happy that I did that. So let's put it back together. Back together, you have to give it a bit of a squeeze in here as well to get these three things to clip into place. That one, that one, and that one. Right, okay, so here we go. Put some volume on it. So that's definitely working. The AVLS is working. Alright, it still does sound a bit distorted, but maybe it's just made for doing more like that when you're jogging, because who's going to be shaking it like that? I'm talking about the anti ronin mechanism. Yeah, okay. Uh, fast forward works. Rewind works. Mega bass works. Just on a song like this, it's uh, not really noticeable. And let's do the oh, go on, have another stop to thing, the auto stop. Oh, we're a good team, you and me. Mm. You always used to be. Remember how we agonised over going organic? We yeah, that's that. Over everything. Yeah. Fast forward. Yeah. There we go, and auto stop as well. Let's just do one more of them and end it on that. Only if I'm not listening. Perfect, right, okay. and one more thing to check is the headphones to make sure that it's coming out of both ears, yeah? Which it is. You're not gonna be able to hear that anyway or you're not gonna be able to tell that it's coming out of both of them. Let me put it up full. So that's one. This is the other one. Right, okay, so that's it. Again, in my opinion, an interesting fix. I thought it was going to be a boring one with just the uh, terminals needed cleaning, but then because of the volume jack and because of the, more importantly for me, the auto stop, it made it an interesting one. So I'm really happy with this series so far. I've, I've had these since last summer and I never got around to fix them because I thought it would possibly make boring videos but it seems like according to the comments that you guys are really enjoying it which is fantastic. So I've got another five of these to do so if you haven't already subscribed please think about subscribing and uh, if you enjoyed it I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. So look out for the other five if you're interested in these fixes. That's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye now.